everybody. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build. Tina, the Tina Turner musical, follows the queen of rock and roll from her humble beginnings in Tennessee to selling out concerts around the world. Don Lewis is known for her roles on A Different World and Veronica Mars, and joins us today to talk about her role as Turner's mother, Zelma Bullock. Put your hands together for Don Lewis. Hey, everybody. How are you? How are you? How you doing? You know what? I'm good. I'm real good for a Monday morning. Thank you. I was like, this is your day off, right, in the theater world? You know what? There, there's no such thing as a day off in the biz, in the entertainment industry. You just give and go and give and go until nobody wants to see you anymore. And then you figure, okay, now what do I do? So, no, I'm grateful. I'm grateful anytime anybody wants to show up and support. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm blessed, so... And Good. you guys have been giving and going for a few months now. <laughs> the show opened when? November 7th was the official opening. Okay, and I think I saw uh, it like the week or two after it opened. Week or two after it opened, yeah. yeah. And it was amazing. And what, how, what has it been like since November? I mean... All I have seen is good press. Everybody in the crowd when I was there loved it. I know you guys did nine shows a day, a week, a week over, the over, over the holidays. Yeah. What has yeah. the reception been like? You know, it's been amazing. The audiences love the show. They sing along. Some of them try to sing a loud, little louder than us. You know, the dancing. By the time we get toward the finale, the entire audience is on their feet. The entire audience is singing along, uh, and uh, they're very responsive audience because people think they know the whole story because they saw the movie but there's so much more in the play that they go oh I didn't know that and then they start talking back to you on stage and and all kind of stuff uh, so playing her mom it really is my honor it's it was intimidating because there's not a whole lot of information about her mother um, except what she shared in the interviews with our book writer Katori Hall, and there's one or two videos uh, out there on YouTube. Uh, so mainly it was me building and developing the character on my own personal experience. Wow. So I have to say, I did not know anything about her relationship with her mother and mm -hmm. how complicated and fraught it was. And I was really moved by your performance because um, you see the struggles that Zelma was going through personally with her own mm -hmm. domestic abuse right. um, and how she sort of had to save herself. So take me Correct. through just like your understanding of who Zelma was in her relationship with Tina. Well, the broad strokes, because I want you to come and see the show, uh, are Zelma Bullock, T Tina's mom, Anna May, as she was to her mother and always Anna Mae. I don't believe, if from everything I've read, her mother called her Tina. She always called her Anna, Anna Mae. Um, came from a small town in Tennessee, and she was married to the town pastor, who was also physically abusive when they were home. So out in the public, he was one charming, charismatic person. At home, it was completely different. It got to a point where she had one daughter, loved her, cherished her, and but she knew she had to save herself and to get out. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for the world, down the line, she got pregnant again, and her husband made her keep it. At least that's what's told in the book and in the story. And that was Anna May. <clears throat> so now she felt trapped. And it just got to a point where the abuse was so much like, I have to go. And she never really felt attached that way to Anna May because she, in her own way, resented the fact that it's because of you I'm stuck here. So she left took the older daughter and left um, and didn't see anime until she was a teen. Um, I basically focused a lot of that on my own personal experience. Uh, I grew up in a domestically violent household. I have three brothers and my mom did a similar thing where in order to save herself, she left and she left my, myself and my brothers with our dad and we didn't see her again for almost a year and a half, almost two years. Um, we were raised by my father's mother she moved us into her brownstone in Brooklyn. I'm born and raised, Brooklyn, New York. What's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> so she owned a brownstone, kicked the tenants out upstairs and put myself and my brothers upstairs, and that's where we lived. So we have that character in the play as well, the grandmother who takes anime in. Uh, along the line, uh, my mom was able to go to school, get a, get a degree, get a job, and come back and get us, uh, and then raise us as best as she could. And her mother said to her, who do you think is going to take you with four kids? You better go back to that man. Zelma is that mom. So having experienced it myself, I know that there are some unpopular choices that are made for very real reasons. And um, my hope and my portrayal of Zelma is that you get to see that. You don't just to see somebody who you're like, ooh, I hate her. I don't like her. You get, get, get to see someone like, okay, I don't like what she did, but I can see 
why she did what she she did. And uh, the biggest compliment I could have gotten was opening night. Miss Tina Turner was there. Have you seen any of those pic pic pictures yes. of opening night? She Beautiful. is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. She's still gorgeous. She grabbed my hand and, and said, I just want to tell you how much I enjoyed your performance. And I thought, Tina Turner's touching me. <laughs> Tina Turner's touching me. I said, okay, um, well, it was my it was my honor to portray your mother, and I really hope I did her spirit justice. Her response was, you made me feel like home. Well, yeah, but when you think about it, I'm like, okay, but was that a good thing? Because you guys didn't have the best relationship. And she laughed. She got, she, I was like, I was so glad she laughed. And she said, no, 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 it was, it was spot on. You were just, you just lovely. So if nobody else likes what I did, I got the stamp of approval from the queen herself, which means the world to me. Yeah. That's so interesting in hearing you talk about your backstory because Zelma could be viewed as a villain for some people, right. but I think you approaching her the way that you did does offer that window into who she is as a woman and her own struggles. And that's what I felt when I saw her. I was like, well, she's also just really struggling and confused right. and nobody's truly a villain, right? They all have something Everybody's going on internally. Got reasons for what, what they do, why they do, how they do it. Uh, even the Ike character that we think we know the reasons why, the show goes into some of the deeper you know, reasons and things, impetuses of why he chooses to do what he do, does. It doesn't make it right, but at least you can say, okay, I see where this is coming from. And the audiences, what we found is that audiences get empowered either because you see a way through whatever it is you are dealing with, that you don't have to stay there. You do not have to remain in an environment that is dangerous to your physical, emotional, um, mental, or financial health. Uh, but it also reveals to some people in the audience, it's like, wait a minute, I do that. I'm the bad actor. That's me causing all that strife because I do some of those things. And you don't think about how it affects the people around you. So whatever it does to cause you to change, to think, to embrace, to make better choices for yourself, whether it's to stop being the bad actor or to stop allowing yourself to have bad acts continue to pummel your life and your spirit, whatever it is, we, we say prayers every night before for the show that the show is not just end entertainment but actually blesses and reaches somebody. Yeah. And I really think it does because seeing somebody as prolific as Tina and seeing really all of the struggles that she went through and then where she's ended up is just inspiring. Yeah. Like you cannot watch this musical without walking out feeling like you can tackle whatever hurdle is in front of you in your life because she did it yeah, that's so awesome. beautifully. Um, so take, take me into becoming Zelma too. I mean, your voice is a little different. Your mannerisms <laughs> change. So how did you develop that part of her too? Well, uh, forgive me now, I have a bit of a sore throat, but I sound like I'm 12. Um, so my voice, I knew I, I, I couldn't be me. <clears throat> so uh, thank you. I um, add some weight to my voice. Being that they're from the South, there's an accent in my voice. Um, and what I noticed from the videos that I, the couple that I did get get to see, each of them, you know how when Tina, Tina sounds kind of mannish, she has that raspy edge to her voice. She, her mama, and Aline all have that raspy edge to their voice. So that's what I do to mine. That's what I talk like this and say, anime, anime. And it goes, it goes there. Um, and she goes from her 20s to her late 70s in the show. So through the research that you were able to do and in, into Zelma and, and Tina, uh, what is something just interesting that you discovered about this woman in her life or the people around her? For as challenged as she was, she did the best she could with what she had. It's, it's um, I work with kids a lot through my nonprofit, and it's, it's interesting to watch some children under the same roof who I don't think their parents realize how differently they can treat their children. One children gets embraces, another child gets handshakes, Another child gets nothing but physical, I'm sorry, but, but verbal um, comments to them. And it's amazing, some kids, that's how they want to be treated, because I don't like being touched, or I want to hear the confirmation that you approve of what I'm doing, or, you know, it's all different, but you never know 
what is positively being received until that moment when the cap comes off, the seltzer water bursts, and people are willing to say what is really in their spirit. And <clears throat> this show is filled with that. Each person takes an opportunity, each of her relationships, whether it's her mother or Ike or the man that she ultimately married, Irwin, or the gentleman that she courted with when they were first out on the road, or or her her or her Ikeettes. There's a moment for each of them in the show where you just can't take it anymore and it comes bubbling out and you speak your truth. Um, so learning what that truth is, again, I'm trying to answer the question without telling you all the whole story. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> you know, th I found very, very interesting for her to finally reveal and say, it's, it's not that I don't love you, it's this. And Tina feeling like her whole life, how could you never have loved me when I always felt this? And then you see, even to the very end or whatever, it's, it's uh, yeah, until you speak your truth, there's no real freedom. Yeah. Made me think that they, I wish they had that love language book. You know, where it's like, this is my love language. What's yours? I like, have a feeling you know, Zelma wouldn't have read it. She yeah. goes, oh, that, that's, that's just foolishness now. That's just, <laughs> all right. I, I don't do that kind of stuff. I, I know what's in my spirit. I know my language. I know my language. <laughs> so I have to, I was surprised. Is this your Broadway debut? Technically, technically, no. Okay. Te technically, no, but for a big show, yes. I was here years ago with Boys Choir of Harlem on Broadway. They did a special concert series. Um, I was I sang with them for about three, three weeks uh, was the concert series, and Kenny G was in it and a few different... Right. But as far as a big Broadway show, I've come close a few times um, with How to Succeed in Business. I was doing that on the West Coast with Matthew Broderick and Megan Mullally before I came here to New York, but ended up booking a TV series and so didn't come. And uh, then with Sister Act, uh, I was the original Dolores Van Cartier, and the gentleman that plays my husband, Richard Bullock, and Tina was my sweaty Eddie. He was the guy that put me in into the convent. Um, we did that, I did that for almost two years. Almost two years, and then um, they had some internal stuff going on, and then it took a year and a half before it came to Broadway, and then by then they had changed the cast. And didn't you also workshop The Wiz, and that's how you met Daniel J. Watts and Adrian Warren, who yes, are we Ike did. and Tina in this? We did the small the Wiz. theater community, guys. We did The Wiz uh, at City Center exactly 10 years ago. That was when uh, I met Daniel and Adrian. Daniel plays Ike mm -hmm. and Adrian Warren plays Tina Turner and I was at a Pearl in, in The Wiz and uh, we had the best time. That was so much fun. That was so much fun. So yeah. what does it mean just to get to work? I mean, I, I'm sure it happens in the theater community a lot, but that 10 years ago you were working on something and then here you are in this really big musical with those two as well. It's, if you're lucky, you get to have legs in this business. Um, you go from gig to gig, which manifests itself into a career, as opposed to just one job where you hit or miss. Um, the people who do it well, meaning the performers who do it well, make it look easy, but it is anything but easy. <laughs> it's anything but easy. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of sacrifice. It's a lot of commitment. You hear no about 95 times more than you ever hear yes in this industry, and you just gotta keep remanufacturing yourself and repackaging yourself and representing yourself as to this is why you should hire me as opposed to the other 700, 900 people who you've seen for this role. So to come full circle now, to be back with Daniel and Adrian and the rest of the cast, we have an absolutely amazing cast in the cast of, of Tina. A woman by the name of Myra Lucretia Taylor plays Gigi, Tina's um, mom. Uh, the little kids in our show, Gloria Manning, Sky Dakota Turner. Sky is a, on a whole other level. Sky plays young anime, and while she's doing our play, she's flying back and forth to Atlanta because she's playing young Aretha Franklin in the Aretha Franklin biopic this film. This little girl can <laughs> sing. She is unbelievable. She's unbelievable. unbelievable. Unbelievable, yeah. First day I heard her sing in rehearsal. She's she's tiny. I thought she was like six, eight years old. When she finished singing, I raised my hand. They said, yeah, I said, is there an equity rule about throwing a shoe at a six-year-old? And she says, Miss Dawn, I'm 10. I said, oh, then you can get both shoes because I'll try to miss your head. It's like, she's amazing.
She's so good. I can't wait to see where her just star amazing. goes. Just Just amazing. Her um, voice is... Yeah. I've been honored. The parents asked me if I would coach her in oh. her acting for the movie because she's got some really challenging things that she has to do oh. in, in the film. So that's it's been my absolute What an, an amazing resource for her because you are really somebody who has been in a lot of my favorite projects. Um, from hanging with Mr. Cooper to obviously A Different World. And what does it mean for you? You know, A Different World ended, what, almost 30 years ago? Uh, yes. But like... <laughs> but the show Grownish was inspired by it, and Lena yes. Waite's production company is called Hillman Grad. Grad. I mean, yes. the influence continues to be felt and seen. What does yes. that feel like? You know what? It's really an honor to be associated with something that was one and entertaining, but two so inspiring and empowering that to this day, because it's still on television, that was 32 years ago. 32 years ago, and there's not been one week of one year that that show has not been on television here in America or somewhere around the planet. That's just God right right there. That's a blessing. So when someone, when Sky walks up to you go, Miss Dawn, I saw your episode with you and Gladys Knight. It's like, why are you watching this show? Because it's, it's timeless because and it holds timeless. up. So it's, it's a blessing. And no matter what I do, I've done, I don't know how many series, how many movies, how many jobs since then. I think I will be Jaleesa until what... <laughs> I come out of the theater, Jaleesa! It's like, it's like, yeah, okay, I was Zelma, but never mind. It's fine, never I'm Jaleesa. Mind. What do you think Jaleesa... I'm on two TV shows now. Jaleesa! It's like, okay, all right. What do you think Jaleesa's doing right now? Jaleesa right now is... <laughs> I was going to make a really bad joke. Never mind. Um, We're here for Jaleesa, it. Jaleesa, yeah, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Jaleesa right now is running things. She's running her own business. She's teaching people how to be financially aware and solvent, and sitting home counting her money. That's what, that's what Jaleesa is doing. <laughs> Jaleesa is doing. No, because, no, but in addition to being on the show, uh, I don't know if you know, but I wrote the theme song for, for, for the show. And the people who called me about working with them on the theme song didn't know I was also being seen to be an actor in the show. And the people who asked me to be an I was doing a Broadway show, The Tap Dance Kid, the national tour at the time. And they knew me as an actor because they had just hired me. So they were seeing me as an actor to be Jaleesa while the musical director was working with me and said, can you write the song for me? Because I had a, I had a record out. I was going to be a recording artist, yeah. you know, all, all of that. And uh, so he said, if you're the same person that wrote this music, you can do what I need done. And so I did them exact same, same time in the same week and a half. And they didn't know they had hired the same person until I was sitting there in the office. And they're talking about, oh, the theme song, this, and the girl singing, and it is great, and the words are perfect, and, da, 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 da. and I'm sitting there like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what? I said, I'm glad you like the song. They said, what you mean? I said, well, I'm the girl. They're like, well, uh-uh. I said, yeah, uh-huh. So, uh, yeah. yeah. You're like, Jaleesa's cash and checks? Jaleesa's cash, cash and checks. checks. Everybody's cash and checks. All my children cash and checks. All them Vincent children. Or cash and checks. Um, I love your voices. So again, you've made a career off of your voice, singing, but also doing a ton of voice work. I don't think yeah. people realize the amount of projects that you have lent your voice to. Yeah. From like Rick and Morty, yep. to The Simpsons, mm -hmm. to The Boondocks, Boondocks. Mm -hmm. right? So currently, I know you're on two animated series. Uh, I'm on a few. A uh, I do one called Apple and Onion. Uh, we've done a couple of, we're, they're about to drop our next season. It's done. <laughs> It's about these different vegetables uh, that go through these different uh, exploits in life. And my character's name, name is Patty. I'm a Jamaican Patty. I run, I run the 99 the dollar, dollar store where Apple and Onion work. They have a neighbor named, named Falafel and all different kinds of people. It's hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Um, another one that I do is... Um, McStuffins. Doc McStuffins. I play Granny McStuffins. She's Granny McStuffins, guys. Doc McStuffins. Uh, yes, I do Spirit. I am Fanny on Spirit, uh, on um, Sophia the First. I'm Miss Buttercup. On Spider Man, I'm Detective Terry Lee. Uh, on uh, We have a new one coming out. Oh, well, Carmen San Diego. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego on Netflix? We've got our first two seasons up now. We're in the process of recording the next one. So I'm not sure when, exactly when that one is going to drop. I play the voice of the chief. And CBS, All Access, they're about to drop their first animated Star Trek series. And I play the captain of the ship on the Star, Star Trek series and a, a number of video games and 
all kinds you of You guys stuff. had no idea, did you? Yeah. Right? I was look, yeah. I was like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> you voice so but that's so cool. What, Thank you. I mean, uh, take me through what that experience is like for you, creating these different characters, working on the voices. What is so fun about that for you? You know, because you get to be people that they would never physically hire you to be. You know, um, there was one cartoon I did called Seaber and Jamal with Tone Loke, where I think I played like four different characters. I played the grandmother. I played the the, the sexy school tea teacher. I played an old Jewish man, the the boss. So I went from talking like, oh, you're going to eat your cream of barley today because it's good for you. You're going to eat like I told you to eat. And then talking about like, bingo, what are you doing? You're wasting my time. Time is money. You need to work, work faster, harder. You know, and then talking like the school teacher, now Clarence, we need you to do your homework and we need it to be turned in on time. All those kinds of things. So I love it. That was the voice I used in um, Inside Out. The Disney movie Inside Out, if anybody saw that. Amy I Pollard. was the teacher, there you go. I was the teacher who welcomes her to her new, new school and the Monsters University. I'm in the new Minions movie that, that's coming I'm out. I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you guys. I had no God's idea, Don. You are God's everywhere, God's and I love it. God's good. God's good. And I will listen for your voice down. Amen. Everything. But see, but if you can tell it's me, then I'm not doing That's it true. well enough. You got to read the credits. They go, Shh. It's like, Shh. They go, they zip by. Yeah. Well, I, I'm so pumped that you have the, I just, that was like a new thing for me, a surprise for me about you, because I've known, I've it's seen you so on so many fun. shows. Yes. But I did not know you were lending your voice to so many different projects, and I think that's so cool. Thank you. Yeah. We do have one question before we get out of here. Okay, sure. The first one comes from Twitter. Along with being in front of the camera or on stage, you have done numerous voiceover roles. Mm -hmm. If you had to choose one of the voices to have for the rest of your life, oh which one gosh. would you pick? Which, which voice would I pick to have? Mine. <laughs> I want, I want the one I, I have. Um, you know, as far as character voices go, uh, because it's close to my heritage, my family's from South America, from Guyana, it would be like the voice I do for Apple and Onion or the voice I did for Futurama. Any Futurama fans? I do the voice of La Barbara. So, yeah, so I would, because she comes a, a very, Hermes, is what you're doing. Hermes, come back, no? You're flying it all to space. Come back, come back. Yeah, I would do her. I think I have an idea for your next show. Just What's a that? one woman show. I'm just gonna stand there and talk to myself in different yeah, voices. Yeah, just a one woman show okay. with like 15 <laughs> different voices, and you can be United States of Dawn, and United it'll States be great. Do you know? Little inside fact: the Minions move movies. That's one guy. He does all those crazy voices talking to himself. And if you listen carefully, some of them are Spanish, like Spanish gibberish, German gibberish, French gibberish. Oh, he's a genius. Yeah, I'll talk to myself. I'll talk to I'll, I'll get it. I will pay to there you watch, go. Right? <laughs> In the meantime, we can check you out in the Tina, the Tina Turner musical, which yes. guys, I, I love it. It is so much fun. It literally ends on a big concert. I'm just gonna let it you guys does. know. After the entire show. So if you're show. ready to dance and sing along, there right. are plenty of opportunities for yes. that. No, people get fooled when they see us take, take our bow. You know how you wanna be the first one out of the theater and you try to rush? Don't do that. Don't do that. You it's like those those show. Marvel movies where there's always scenes after. To, mm -mm. Don't we'll miss don't, the whole don't show leave. that people would pay two hundred dollars yeah. to just go see yeah. that part. And I'm yeah. not even making that up. So mm -hmm. congrats on the show. It is amazing. Thank you. you guys can check out Tina the Tina Turner musical and go to tinathemusical.com for more ticket information and put your hands together for Don Lewis. Thank you.